Hey everyone, today I'd like to go over the basics of tube amp overdrive. To some people this may be obvious, but I had been playing guitar for a long time before I finally really understood what's going on. With so many effect pedals out there, it may seem like overdrive is just another effect, but the overdriven sound was originally produced by pushing vacuum tube amps past their intended range of operation. To start off, let's talk a bit about how tube amps are structured. Most tube amps consist of two sets of tubes, a preamp section and a power amp section. The preamp section boosts the very weak signal coming from the guitar's pickups to a level that can then be sent to the power amp section. The power amp section further boosts the signal to a level that can power a speaker. If you're curious why amplifiers are typically split into two parts like this, check the description for a link to an interesting stack exchange discussion on this topic. With any amplifier, if you send it a signal that's beyond its intended capacity, you'll get what's called clipping. The loudest parts of the sound are clipped, altering the sound. A perfect amplifier would simply flatten the waveform like in these images, but in practice, real amplifiers react in more complicated ways. How a given amplifier reacts to clipping is the core of how its overdrive sounds. There are thousands of different amplifier designs that distort in subtly but noticeably different ways. It's generally thought that tube-based amplifiers distort in a more pleasing way than transistor-based solid-state amplifiers. Over the years, people have developed ways to simulate tube amp overdrive digitally and to get pleasing overdrive out of transistors. In fact, most overdrive pedals produce distortion using transistors. This has allowed for an explosion in different distortion sounds in small convenient packages, but many argue they still don't beat the natural distortion of a real tube amp. To show you how real overdrive works, I'm going to use a very simple tube amp, the Orange OR15. All we need to do is send a strong enough signal to the preamp tubes, and we will start to get distortion. This amp has very little of what's called headroom, so it distorts with even a moderately strong signal. Very clean amplifiers, like the Roland Jazz Chorus, have a lot of headroom, meaning even a very strong signal won't cause the amp to distort. Even with the OR15's limited headroom, a guitar plugged directly into the front probably won't be able to produce a strong enough signal to cause distortion. To help with this, the OR15 has what's called a gain knob. The gain knob increases the strength of the guitar's signal before sending it to the preamp tubes. This allows us to get a signal strong enough to cause the preamp tubes to distort. But even when using the gain knob, the strength of the signal coming from the guitar matters. Even with the gain knob set low, if we boost the signal going into the amp using an EQ or a clean boost pedal, we can get the preamp tubes to start to distort. Similarly, even with the gain knob set high, if we reduce the strength of the signal using the guitar's volume knob, we can stop the amp from distorting. All that matters is the strength of the signal that is sent to the preamp tubes. This can be controlled using the gain knob, the pedals between the amp and the guitar, and the guitar's volume knob. It can even be controlled by how hard you play. If the signal level is adjusted such that the tubes are just on the edge of distorting, you can get more or less distortion by playing harder or softer. The output of the preamp will now be sent to the power tubes for further amplification, but before that, the signal strength can be adjusted by the master volume knob. With the gain knob set high, the output of the preamp tubes will be very close to their maximum. If that output was sent directly to the power tubes, the result would be extremely loud. To make it possible to overdrive the preamp tubes at reasonable volume levels, most amps have a master volume knob. If the master volume is set any less than all the way up, the signal from the preamp will be reduced so the end result isn't so loud. Between the preamp and the power amp, many amps also have an effects loop. This allows you to attach pedals to modify the distorted signal of the preamp. I often place an EQ pedal in my effects loop so I can shape the preamp tube distortion after it's created.
there are several other effects like chorus and reverb that sound better in the FX loop. Finally, the signal reaches the power tubes and is then sent to the speaker. If you send a strong enough signal to the power tubes, you can also get power tube distortion. Some people say they prefer the sound of power tube distortion to the sound of preamp tube distortion, but to get power tube distortion, you usually need to have very high volume levels. To avoid this, you can attach what's called an attenuator between the output of the power tubes and the speaker. In the same way the master volume knob decreases the signal from the preamp tubes, the attenuator can decrease the signal from the power tubes so you can get power tube distortion at reasonable output volumes. In summary, tube overdrive is produced by sending a signal into a vacuum tube strong enough to make it distort. The gain knob on most amplifiers simply boosts the signal that's sent to the preamp tubes. Even without a gain knob, many tube amps can be made to distort by boosting the signal before it reaches the amp using an EQ or a clean boost pedal. It's also possible to make an amp's power tubes distort, but if you don't have an attenuator, it's going to be very loud. Most amps aren't as simple as the OR15. A lot of them have multiple channels, with one usually devoted specifically to overdrive. An amp like that may be set up so that the clean channel has so much headroom you'll never hear it distort, and the overdrive channel has no headroom so it always distorts, even with the gain knob turned low. I used to have an amp like this, and I think that's the reason it took me so long to understand overdrive. While these amps are convenient for quickly switching between clean and distorted tone, they make it hard to understand what exactly is creating the distortion. If you would like to play around with tube overdrive, I would highly recommend getting a simple high quality amp like the OR15 instead of something more complicated. A gain knob and a master volume knob are all you really need. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like. Thanks for watching.